impact on the Indo-Pacific as well. Let's see what the two leaders discuss. Uh, Jean, if I can uh, come to you, uh, let me begin by asking you about the areas, the sectors in India which make you the most excited and if there are certain uh, goods or certain sectors which could see a boost as a result of this visit, the agreement signed during this visit, what would those be according to you? Yes, thank you. Um, obviously, uh, the uh, multi-sector uh, could benefit from uh, uh, this visit, and we are very excited of this uh, honor which is given to uh, our uh, French president. Uh, it's a testament to the strong relationship, uh, which is uh, with already a great presence uh, uh, of uh, French companies uh, in India and vice uh, uh, versa. Um, there will be uh, obviously a, a great benefit for uh, the biggest uh, sector, energy, uh, aeronautics, defense, uh, and uh, uh, of course uh, uh, your uh, other uh, guest will probably talk about, uh, about that. But uh, I would really say that it creates or it reinforces the favorable context in which uh, French uh, companies evolve here uh, in India. And I expect that the benefits uh, will be cross-sector. Right. Uh, Jean, this is also a time for companies, for governments to discuss some of the bottlenecks, some of the issues around ease of business. As someone who understands both the Indian economy and the French economy very well, could you give us a sense of certain concerns around uh, French businesses wanting to deepen the footprint in India, but seeing certain regulatory hurdles? Any concerns on the business side, according to you? Yeah, there are always things that can be improved, and uh, uh, it's one of the mission of uh, IFKI to uh, really uh, partner with the, the companies to uh, gather all these uh, uh, painful uh, uh, regulation that uh, can be hurdles to uh, the development of uh, uh, the, the ties. But uh, I must say, we uh, uh, usually have very constructive uh, partnership and discussion with uh, uh, Indian authorities, and uh, I look forward to uh, such a visit to be a, a good moment to uh, continue to improve uh, the context. So uh, I will not uh, focus too much on the, the, the issues, but uh, on the momentum to solve them and how uh, great uh, uh, the uh, dialogue is established with uh, uh, Indian authorities. All right, uh, so you want to focus on the dialogue, on improving the ease of business. Ashish Saraf, if I were to come to you now, uh, Thales has a very deep footprint in India for many decades now be it in aviation, be it in aviation solutions and in defense. Are there certain agreements, certain discussions that you are closely looking out for and how they could benefit the French uh, uh, defense and aerospace sector? Uh, yeah, um, you know, as Ambassador Singh said, uh, this is, you know, a, a testament to President Macro being invited as the, the, uh, the guest of honor for our Republic Day is a testament of the strong ties that the two countries have. Now, Thales, it, it's also a timely reminder that Thales, uh, a French multinational uh, who has presence in aviation, defense, and digital identity and security solutions. Uh, we've been a partner uh, for India for over seven decades. Uh, last year, we actually completed 70 years of our presence in India. Um, we have obviously built a very strong footprint in India, you know, specifically by being present in seven cities, uh, having close to over 2,000 employees, uh, over 75 supply chain uh, partners in India that generate, uh, you know, over 200 million of, of supply chain activity every year. So from the standpoint of, uh, you know, India is an excellent market for us uh, on the in the defense, aviation, and digital identity and security solutions. Uh, for us, the military industrial roadmap that's been uh, talked about, maybe we are very excited about the 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 military industrial roadmap that's being uh, that's been discussed and and that will be uh, potentially a big topic of discussion between between the two countries and and the two leaders. Uh, which we are very closely watching. So we are excited about the opportunities that these are create, creating for us. Uh, we are already have a strong presence here and are big supporters of the Make in India uh, narrative and the initiative. Uh, we, we manufacture a lot of defense equipment here, not only for domestic consumption, but for uh, export into the, the global markets, like we say, not only for India, but India for the world. 
specifically in aviation and defense sector, uh, clearly we are watching out, uh, uh, you know, creation of these that will allow us to bring in and share more technologies uh, into the country. Uh, and, and this creates a lot of opportunities for us, not only in the domestic market, but also to utilize our skills and talents that we can explore to serve our markets across the globe. Right. So you're looking out for enabling policies which will allow you to manufacture more for India and for the world as well. Looking out for the military industrial roadmap as well. Uh, Ambassador Arun Singh, the uh, Rafale Marine Aircraft deal for 26 aircraft for the Indian Navy, that has been talked about. Uh, also, the deal for three additional Scorpion submarines to be built by Mazgaon Dock Limited. How likely are those agreements uh, to be approved during those visit, during this visit? Well, it's difficult to say whether they'll specifically be approved during the visit because these conversations take some time. So I don't think it has to be related to a particular visit. But from what we understand, the conversations are going on. So I'm reasonably confident that eventually agreement would work worked out because you have to discuss pricing and various tech level of technology transfers. There are various things involved. So these things can take time and eventually to work out whether it works out in the context of this visit or not, I don't think uh, is so relevant. Uh, but Prenchit, you had also spoken about the Indo-Pacific and the focus there. And I think that's an important dimension because not many people realize that France is a resident power in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, you know, India has 2 million square kilometers of an exclusive economic zone. France has 9 million square kilometers of exclusive economic zone. It has a presence in the Indian Ocean mm. at Reunion Island, Mayotte and other islands. It has a presence in the Pacific uh, with New Caledonia, Tahiti. So France has interests in this region and there is a convergence of interests between India and France in this broader region. You just saw, for example, a couple of days ago, report of a major air exercise involving uh, India, France, mm. and UAE, and Rafale aircraft from all these three countries. Mm. Uh, Indian and French navies mm. have done regular patrols in the Indian Ocean. Uh, and, for example, with the challenge that there is to commercial traffic through the Red Sea. You know, there are areas where mm. India and France can cooperate. So, this is a, so these dimensions of cooperation will also pick up. Right. Uh, Jean, coming back to you, Areas where you expect the trade between the two countries to increase. Uh, do you expect certain enabling policies on that front? Are there certain product lines where you expect the trade to go up? What about uh, uh, wines and spirits for Perno Ricard? How, how encouraged do you feel by the optics of this visit? Well, um, if I take the global context, uh, I guess the uh, prominent uh, um, role of France within the uh, European Union to... Uh, discuss the uh, EU-India uh, free trade agreement will be uh, definitely a framework uh, that uh, could enhance uh, very much the, the, the relationship between the two countries and the, the trade between the, the two countries, again, on the multi sectors. Uh, in uh, my uh, sector of wine and uh, spirits, obviously, uh, there is already some dynamism, but it's uh, uh, improving uh, uh, very much. Uh, there are uh, discussions uh, about uh, possible uh, lowering of uh, uh, taxes uh, and uh, uh, custom duties, I mean. And uh, uh, obviously, uh, the uh, regulation, we are also a, a plenary car with a, a strong presence, a local strong presence. We uh, go by the Make in India uh, uh, motto of uh, uh, Prime Minister uh, Modi. And uh, uh, we uh, believe that uh, uh, with more investment in the country, we will continue to uh, benefit from more, more conducive uh, policies. And uh, the trends are uh, excellent, being it uh, into uh, the mass market, but even better uh, in the uh, uh, higher uh, um, uh, higher segments. Uh, the uh, consumers uh, in India uh, develop a higher purchasing power. There are aspirations to uh, access better uh, products uh, and uh, drink uh, uh, better. And uh, uh, we definitely see that as a huge opportunity uh, for uh, us and the uh, entire sector. Okay, uh, on that note, we'll take a short break, but we will discuss the India-France strategic and business ties more closely when we return. But uh, don't go anywhere, we're coming right back. Time for a short break. Uh, yes, uh, we are back after the break and we are on News Centre. Joining us now 
our former Indian ambassador to France, Arun Singh, Ashish Saraf, Vice President, Country Director for India at Thales, and Jean Taboul, President at the Indo-French Chambers of Commerce. Ashish Saraf, if I were to ask you about the amount of defence components, the quantum, uh, the value of exports, defence exports from India to France at this juncture, or India to Europe, and how do you expect uh, this number to rise this year, especially after this visit? Um, so I will speak from, from our business standpoint. Uh, we have been present, like I said, in India for the last 70 years, and uh, we have been a big proponent of Make in India, specifically Make in India for India and Make in India for the world. Uh, cumulative over the last five years, we've been successfully able to source mainly for export over 750 million euros worth of hardware services and software, uh, not only for, uh, you know, the well, typically for the consumption for the world, wherein uh, it gets integrated into our products that get, uh, you know, uh, sold and deployed globally. Uh, this number is continually increasing. We are we are experiencing uh, you know a double digit percentage increase uh, on this number specifically over the recent years. Uh, I'm proud to say that we'll be exceeding over 200 million of uh, of sourcing specifically for exports uh, from India for the world. Uh, this visit is only poised and positioned to to enhance the activity to a level where the defense technological collaboration uh, with the defense industrial roadmap that gets defined will present more and more opportunities for not only for companies like us, but the companies like us who develop the supply chain here uh, to integrate into our, our production. So we are looking at you know, the opportunities uh, not only for sourcing, but also to integrate the Indian talent into our global workforce. So it's an opportunity that's twofold right. is to clearly utilize the the skills that are available in Indian supply chain to make sure that we take mm -hmm. advantage of that and and source them for the for the utilization globally. And second is right. India, as you know, is a massive pool of talent and we are excited to tap into that uh, with thousands of engineers mm -hmm. working on our product base globally. So it it kind of allows us to to you know take advantage of of these twofold or both on both sides and it's only increasing over the over the coming decade if we see it. All right. So you you're seeing India as a big market where you want to integrate this into your global supply chains, the talent also and components as well. Uh, Ambassador Arun Singh, uh, speaking about the strategic component. What are some of the common worries of both leaders at this juncture as we see a war in Ukraine, as we see a war in Middle East, tensions in uh, the Red Sea? And also, if you could throw a light on the significance of this visit starting from Jaipur, as we talk, there are pictures coming in from uh, Amber Fort, from Hava Mehel, uh, which uh, President Macron visited a short while back. He's addressing people. Uh, someone has also put a local scarf, locally produced scarf, uh, on his shoulders. So just give us a significance of why Jaipur as well. I think a uh, visit uh, to Jaipur is to emphasize that the relationship is not just at the official level, not just confined to the capitals of the two countries, but extends uh, beyond that. I recall, for example, when Prime Minister Modi had visited uh, France in 2015, April, and that was his first visit there as uh, uh, Prime Minister. And I was the ambassador there. And he not only visited Paris, uh, but he uh, went to other cities. He went to Lille, he went, for example, uh, to, uh, where, to Toulouse, uh, where Air Airbus and, uh, is there, where the French uh, space agency, CNES, uh, has a facility. Uh, and he also went to the site where uh, there's a memorial to Indian soldiers who died in the First World War, uh, fighting in Europe, fighting for France. And I recall that President Macron, when he was here in 2018, had pointed out that more than 140,000 Indian soldiers had died in the First World War fighting for France. So to show that there is a much wider dimension to the partnership, uh, and hence a city other than Delhi, and so that's why he went uh, to Jaipur. 
and interacting with the people there, vis visiting uh, historical sites. Uh, there is also uh, the connect between the two countries related to culture. Uh, we have uh, the Indian cultural festivals, uh, Namaste France, that are held regularly in France, and uh, the French cultural festivals, Bonjour India, that are held regularly in India. So that's uh, another uh, dimension. So that's why this has been emphasized. And going beyond that to your first question about what are areas of common concern, and it's across the globe. Uh, the two countries see the partnership as a global partnership. Uh, in Europe, certainly, you know, France has a lot of concerns uh, related to what's happening in Russia, uh, Ukraine conflict, because it's a challenge to the European security architecture. And India is also concerned, because Russia is a very important partner uh, for India, but as are countries in Europe. And destabilization there has an impact uh, not just on defense supplies, not just on security concerns, but also the economic, you know, supply of energy, food, mm. fertilizers, they're all disrupted. Or if you look at West Asia, France mm. has a big presence. It has a facility in Djibouti, it has a facility in Abu Dhabi, and therefore whatever is happening in the Red Sea is something of concern to them, as well as Chinese unilateral right. assertive postures in the Pacific. So there are many areas to discuss right. and talk about. All right. Uh, my final question to Jean. Jean, as the president of the Indo-French Chambers of Commerce and Industry, uh, any key recommendations for fostering closer and bigger business ties between the two countries and your view on closer linkages between our financial markets as well? Recently, the Indian government, as early as this Wednesday, had allowed the direct listing of shares of Indian companies on the international exchanges based at the gift city. Now, this is to help Indian companies listed on the Indian stock exchanges to be better able to access foreign capital. How do you see this move? And what do you think can foster closer ties between the two countries? Well, uh, as I said earlier, uh, the, the presence is already uh, uh, significant with more than 700 affiliates of uh, French companies present in India. And this represents uh, more than uh, 450,000 jobs. And uh, uh, whatever change, the one you mentioned, which facilitates uh, uh, the uh, exchange across countries, is very welcome. Financial sector is one of the sector which has uh, a lot of uh, uh, potential and uh, probably uh, uh, even more uh, since uh, uh, the UK decided to leave uh, Europe and uh, uh, Paris, uh, France, can be really uh, within Europe uh, a great destination uh, for a financial institution uh, of India trying to uh, uh, reach Europe. And uh, uh, vice versa, we see uh, a lot of uh, uh, great uh, uh, investment by French bank uh, in uh, India, BNP Paribas, Société Générale, with uh, uh, a lot of uh, presence uh, for uh, the domestic market, but also uh, as a hub for uh, uh, the uh, world and for the service. So we obviously uh, welcome all these moves that facilitate uh, this presence uh, cross-country. And uh, I hope the current visit will help uh, uh, um, uh, tie the link even more and facilitate uh, the trade between the countries. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Jean, for joining us. Thank you very much to Ashish Saraf and Ambassador Arun for joining us on the program, giving us your view on the India-France relationship. A very important visit. And later this evening, Prime Minister and President Macron will be sitting down for a bilateral meeting. And tomorrow is that big Republic Day Parade, which we will be watching on our television screens. Thank you once again, viewers, for joining us. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of News Center. Goodbye.